with summer just around the corner i've been working on some of my projects for the beach season why not i love this it, the colors are fabulous i got some great results stay tuned and i'll take you through how you can make one too hi everybody it's janet back for moon cusser art create a beach resin art tray I've worked with trays before and I love doing them. They are so pretty. You can see I've got my setup ready here. I have the resin I'm gonna be using today is Artistry Epoxy. I just started using this. I used it on a project recently in a beach type setting and it worked really great. It's very thick. It gives excellent ocean lacing. So if I'm doing a beach tray, you know I want to have some really nice lacing, and this is going to give it to me. The other thing that is key in a tray situation for me is that this has a heat rating of up to 500 degrees. That's really important when I'm doing anything that potentially somebody's going to put a hot mug down on the surface. I want it to be able to withstand and not cause any rings on the surface. I want it to stay pretty. So... We're going to be using that for our epoxy resin. You can see I've got my yogurt cups set up here on top. I like to use those to keep my tray up off the surface because it's going to cure better if there's a flow of air underneath. When you're pouring in a thick layer, you can get a lot of heat generated as the epoxy cures and having it up off the surface, it has the airflow. So I'm gonna get a better cure. My room temperature is at about 72 degrees. That's also key when you're working with your resin. So we've got that. I have my safety equipment. I've got my nitro gloves. I have my full face respirator. And let's talk about some of the colors we'll be using. I have some colors from Art Tree Creations. One is a gel pigment. The other one is an opaque. So nice colors, beachy colors. I have some of my Black Diamonds Mica Powder. This is their blue green, really nice shade. I like to use the Epoxy Resin Stores pigments. This is their white from their Flow Art Liquid Pigment line. It is one of the brightest whites I have ever used. So love that, great lacing out of it. I have a couple of inks that I might be using. I always have spare things sitting around. This is from Dollar and Roni, and it is marine blue, a real pretty, uh, let's see what kind of, this is a acrylic ink, so that's great. And I also have Doc, yeah, Doc P.H. Martin. This is a calligraphy ink, Jade. It has a nice uh, metallic iridescence to it. This is an old pigment. This is one of my first pigments and I've been working in resin for about five years now. This is from Artie Sue. Artie Sue is no more. This is a gold paste pigment. There's a lot of different brands out there but I recommend getting a paste in this application. So that's what this is. It's called Bright Gold and I think that's it for my pigments. So let's get started pouring. This is a tray that I got from, uh, I think I got this one on Amazon. I've gotten them in the past from Walmart. All the links to all the products will be listed in the description box. So check for those. If I have any codes that I can offer you, look for those. They can get you some discounts. All right, so let's get started. I've made marks on my cup for equal amounts of 7 ounces of the hardener, 7 ounces of the resin, and I always put the resin on top of the hardener and let it sink through. I mix this for about 3 minutes, maybe even a little bit more, and it combined very nicely, very few bubbles, but it is crystal clear. Loving this Artistry Epoxy. Okay, we're going to begin here with some of the Art Tree Creations. And this is the Stormy Night. Now this one is uh, considered an opaque, but 
I have yet to have it be opaque for me. <laughs> it is uh, very transparent. It's a really dark color, so a very small amount gives you a nice tint. You can see I'm cleaning up. I had a little drip on the side of my board. I clean those up with alcohol on a paper towel and it cleans right up. But anyway, so I'm just going to pour this out, fill this top corner. I like to begin with the darkest part of my ocean piece of the water first. So I'm going to fill in this top corner here and just keep a little bit in reserve. I'm going to use my popsicle stick to move it around and get it into the edges of the tray. I'm going to warm up the resin to pop the bubbles. I'm using my heat gun because this is a wooden tray. I really want to avoid using a torch where I can so the heat gun works well. I can just tip the board and let it run into those corners. Get it right up to the edges of the tray so I don't want to have any marks or areas where there isn't resin right up to those edges. So you can see it moves around quite nicely once it's warmed up. This is Art Tree Creations, their aqua, and this is the gel pigment. And this one is very opaque. This one just really, again, intense color from the Art Tree Creations pastes. And this one is a beautiful color to use for an ocean piece. I just love it. So put that down and then I'm going to start using, this is a silicone spatula. It's actually from a company that makes tools for ceramics. Uh, I believe it's Princeton. Um, and you can just use those and then clean them right up with some alcohol on a paper towel again. Or you can just let it cure and then peel it right off either way. So I'm just going to move that around. Get it right into those edges and spread that out. Now again, with the Artistry Epoxy being a really thick epoxy, you need to work quickly. I have a work time of the, about 30 to 40 minutes. So I want to keep that in mind because there's nothing worse than having your resin start to seize up and set up and you can't move it. So I'm just going to do a little bit of blending, bringing some of the colors through to one another. Using that spatula tool works great. Make sure I get my coverage right up to those edges there. That's good. Just sweeping that right through. Okay. Now we're gonna start with the Artie Sue Break Gold. Again, this is a paste pigment. Uh, they're no longer available, but if you look for other brands that make pastes that are a metallic gold, they're going to be similar to this. So I like these in this type of situation because it gives really nice detail effects for a beach area. So just, again, just filling in those corners and using the heat gun. You can see I have that nozzle tip on so that I can focus the heat exactly where I want it. Just going over and blowing those pastes, those pigments around. And by doing this, I'm warming up that resin. I have to be careful that I don't get it too hot. You can actually scorch your resin if you keep your tools in the same spot for too long. And you don't want to do that. So now that it's warmed up, I can actually tip the board and run that resin see it moving up there in the top corner the gold is just moving along nicely there you go and now we're going to come back in with a little bit more of that aqua color fill in that spot that was open in the middle and now i'm going to use that tool wipe it off and begin moving these colors closer together. You can see I'm not quite making them touch each other. And that's because I'm going to be adding the white for the waves in there. So I want to leave a space where I can pour that white in. Very carefully just bringing that resin right to the edge of the tray. And 
just blowing that resin around, getting those colors to combine a little bit. Sorry about the heat gun getting in the way. Now this is the oh, this is the black diamonds. They're a blue green. It's a really nice color. It worked so well on this piece. I was just thrilled with the results. This is a mica powder. It blends in super into resin. One of my favorite micas. They have so many great color combinations. They have two tones. A lot of fun to look through on their website. I'll be posting the link in the description box so if you want to check them out. Now this is the Dollar and Roni. This is their Jade. Again, it's an iridescent calligraphy ink. So it goes right in there. Makes it just a little bit lighter up by that gold beach area. And I'm going to let these kind of kiss up to one another, filling in all the voids. As I'm working, I'm making sure that I'm not leaving any spots open, filling them all in carefully. I want to make sure I have color all the way across to this. I don't want to have to go back in and add it later. And now this is when keeping a little bit of color in reserve in your cups to this point, this is where you can now start laying out some ribbons so that once I begin with the heat gun and the torch, these are going to combine with one another and this is where you'll get some really pretty effects. Now when you're working on a tray and you're trying to run these ribbons, it's not like when you're working on a canvas or a board and you can take that line right off the edge. You can't do that on a tray. So you want to try to get in as close to your edge as possible because you don't want that end. You can see it, it like maybe up in the middle left of that board you can see where I kind of came back on it. So you know I could have done a little bit better job. I spotted a hair in there so I can get that out of there and warming up the resin again a little bit with the heat gun looking for any hairs that might have blown in and i'm gonna finish up with some more lines of color you can see i'm getting pretty low and it's really running slowly off of my stick okay getting the torch ready now that the whole board is covered, I can begin using the torch and the heat gun combination. I use the heat gun after I've hit it with the torch just a little bit. The torch is a very intense heat. It's going to really loosen up the resin and then I blow it out using the heat gun and then come back again with the heat gun. So I'm working with two hands heat gun in one, torch in the other, and that's where I'm driving out the mica across the other pigments. And again, doing a combination of an acrylic, or I should say it's a calligraphy ink. I have an opaque, I have a transparent, I have a mica. All those things work together to help you get some good combination and effects across your piece. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit, give you a better view of how I'm using that heat gun and torch combination. Again, a blast of the torch, hit it with the heat gun to move it, and that's what's going to make the combinations. All right, so that's looking good. Let's get our clear. We're going to put down a nice heavy line of clear right here at the beach area. It's important to put down the clear and then follow with the white because the clear is going to let that white float out across. Again, hit it with the torch, heat it up, and then drive it with that heat gun. And that's what's going to create the lacing effects and create that wave look into the resin for me. And zoomed back in so that you can see a little bit close up again. Hit it with the torch, use the heat gun, and then stretch out those cells with the torch again. 
All right. So we're getting some really nice lacing. Again, a really thick epoxy resin is the best in my opinion for getting some really good lacing. It's going to hold. I'm doing it late in the amount of time that I'm able to work with the resin. So that's also going to make the results of the lacing kind of stick in their spot. And I'm going to add just a few more really small ribbons. Add some of those details. I've got a little bit more of the calligraphy ink from the Doc Martens. Uh, I always say it wrong. Doc PH, Dr. PH Martin. I guess that's what it is. <laughs> yeah. All right. So that's looking good. And let's put uh, another spot out into the deep water adding some more of that really nice stormy night from art tree creations and i'm going to follow it with the flow art white and there it goes beautiful love it very nice Okay. So you just, whoop, a little bit of smoke. See, when you start getting smoke off of it, that's when you know you're about done. <laughs> and it's okay. If, if I were just trying to finish this off as one layer, I wouldn't be really happy about that um, because you can get some, it looks like an orange peel effect, but that's okay. I have some small shells. I'm going to start dropping those now into the beach area and there's no rhyme or reason i'm just going to drop them wherever i feel like it because this is a tray i'm using very small shells again i'm going to be doing a top coat a clear coat over the entire thing i picked some of the smaller shells that i have so that Hopefully, I don't have them sticking up too much in the surface of the tray. I'm just using a toothpick to fine tune, make sure that I've got everything blended right up to that edge. Okay, there it is, covered up. I don't know about you guys, but I have critters, and I play with my critters, so I get critter hair on me. And then, you know, as hard as I try to keep it out of the studio, it comes down here on my clothing and whatever, but I'm not going to stop playing with my critters. Anyway, I use a cheap, lightweight plastic paint drop cloth to cover my work as it's curing. I use my Rust-Oleum paint cans to keep a canvas this is just a canvas i have all kinds of things but this one is small enough that i just grabbed this canvas made sure there's no dust on it propped it up on my cans and covered it with my cheap plastic drop cloth now you know i, I it's just me what can i say i check my stuff for dust and things like that as best i can Sometimes, you know, they just sneak in there. Let's get a little peek under here. It's a little peek. Hello. You're looking pretty nice. Okay, goodbye. Anyway, it's all tucked in. And we're going to let that cure overnight. And we'll see you in the morning. Well, welcome back. It's the next morning and I've taken the drop cloth off and here's a quick look at the details up close. What do you think? I think it turned out pretty good. <laughs> I added a couple more shells in there before I covered up the piece, but check this out. That blue green from Black Diamonds, just, it's so pretty in there. And the lacing from that Flow Art White from the Epoxy Resin Store, fantastic. Okay guys, I'm at my art table. And here's my tray. 
looking mighty fine. I'm really pleased with the colors of my ocean. Loving it. Um, I am not the first person to be doing this. I have seen many other artists that do beach scenes do this. And this is the first time I am doing it. So <laughs> uh, we'll see how it goes. I decided I was going to add in some rays to my ocean water. So they're, they're going to be fine. They're going to be in, you know, in the water areas here. So these are my, you know, I just printed off some quick shots of rays and um, yeah, I'm going to draw some rays on here. So it's the next day. This has been cured for 24 hours. And if you pour within 24 hours, you don't have to do any sanding or anything like that. So I want to get these drawn on here. I have two markers. I'm using Craft Smart markers. They're oil-based pens. And I really like these a lot. They have a, a little bit of a gloss finish to them. And when I put them on resin, they really stay put. I have used Posca markers as well. And Posca markers, they can rub off. So I, I am going to be clear coating this entire surface. So I'm not worried about anything rubbing off. The other reason why I'm clear coating, this is really important. This resin is rated by the FDA to be food safe. And that means that if food comes in contact with it, you don't want to serve raw food lying on it or anything like that. But if, if something comes in contact with it, it's, it's fine. Um, you're not using it like a plate, okay? So you don't want to do that. But anytime you add pigments or mica powders, um, anything that you add into the resin, all bets are off. So that is why I clear coat the entire surface. I want to seal all those pigments in there. I do not want to have any worries for anybody that purchases this tray about um, any concerns over food safety. So that's really important to me. Um, these markers are from Michael's. I've been getting them there for years and years. I Again, I really like them. I have two different tips. I have, this is what they call their fine tip. And this is their, you have to be careful because I have unscrewed these. <laughs> this is their, I, I don't even know what they call that tip. Um, extra fine, I guess. It's a very fine point. And that one is the one I'm going to use to draw the outlines. And then once I have my rays in spots that I like them, then I'll color them in with the fine tip. Okay, so let's get going putting those on. So I'll use the fine tip marker to draw the outline of my stingray. And I want to make it so that they kind of look like, you know, the waves are over top of them. So I'm trying to give a little bit of a space for the um, white to be able to be over top of the blacked out shadow of the stingrays. So I'm working in like that. Once I get the little details, I can come back in with the thicker marker and fill them all in nicely. Now everybody has different methods, but this seems to be working okay for me. Here's a close-up look of how they turned out. I'm happy with that. Okay, and let's get to the clear coat. Now because this is the top layer, I batched up 11 ounces total. Again, when I measure my resin, I'm measuring it using water to get my mark. So I do that in equal amounts, combine my resin, and I'm just moving that across, making sure that I don't have any gaps. Use the torch to pop any bubbles, and we're going to get ready to put that with a dust cover. All right, here we are outside taking a look at that tray. I love it. It 
just shines in the sunlight. You can see how those micas just reflect the light right back out. The lacing looks fantastic. The drama of the dark turquoise against the blue-green mica and then the opaque aqua color along with that calligraphy ink by Dr. P.H. Martin and I love a gold beach. Thanks so much for watching here on Moon Cusser Art. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Have a great day and go create.